Ragnarok started like any other MMORPG of the time. It had the Holy Trinity system, which is a division of labor. It was a division between the tank, healer and DPS. But as time went by, the game expanded and there were more roles and the game mechanics became more and more interesting, they were more complex. But nowadays, there is no Holy Trinity anymore. Everyone plays all the roles. It's the end of the Holy Trinity system and the age of solo play. Hello everyone, I'm Game Citizen, and today we'll talk about the end of the Holy Trinity system and the rise of solo play in Ragnarok. So let's start by the old times, the good old times. In this first part of the video, I'll talk about how Ragnarok improved upon the Holy Trinity. In the beginning, there were six classes, Swordsman, Mage, Archer, Merchant, Thief and Acolyte. The perfect tank was the Swordsman, that's why it has the skill Provoke. But if there were no Swordsman, any other close combat class could play the role of tank. So you see, it's not like there was just one class for each role but except for the healer. Only the novice could be the healer because it's the only class that could heal other players. And pretty much all classes could be DPS. But mage was supposed to be the one of the highest DPS. Healing the game was not easy. You could use potions, but they could be a bit expensive. And there was a limit weight you could carry. Otherwise, you had to sit and wait to recover the HP bar. I mean, does anyone else sit to recover HP in the game nowadays? The Swordsman had that skill, actually we still have this skill, increase HP recovery for speeding up HP recovering while not moving. It's so crazy, sitting was really a part of the game. And it was a part of the social aspects of the game. And it's interesting that, well, we see less recovered HP and also there is less of the social aspect in the game. Playing groups was very common, but not the rule. All classes were capable of dealing damage. The Acolyte could apply heal to undead, so that was a way for them to play alone or as DPS. Even the Merchant had a skill to deal damage. But of all classes, the Archer was the most independent one, especially when you could use the map as a natural barrier. Sometimes you could place yourself on like the top of the mountain, and this was really nice because then you could kill from afar. The problem is when the monster would drop something and then you'd have to run down to get it, like some card. And then there were the second classes. The 2-1 classes didn't change much the main characteristics of the first classes. The Swordsman becomes a Knight, which is a better tank or a better DPS. The Archer becomes a Hunter with better DPS and being able to use traps, which makes them even more dependent, so the Archer was already dependent. And when it becomes a hunter, it's even more dependent. The acolyte becomes a priest who can focus on either playing support or playing as exorcists with specific skills against undead. So it really expanded the game, but not so much. It was only when we had the 2-2 classes that the game really went over and beyond. These classes really enriched the game. The archer could now become a bard or a dancer. They could provide a different kind of support, it was different from the Acolytes. What the Bard could do, it could increase your attack speed, a little bit of healing, and even increasing the experience points gained by killing monsters. And the mechanics were so innovative, the Bard would sing, it would play a song, actually, in the game. And very nice songs, by the way. And you could punch people with a guitar or a whip in the case of the dancer. You can see how the game designers were inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. The bard is the bard. And it's so rare to have games with bard as a class. And take the thief. The thief could become an assassin. That was the 2-1 class. A class focused on DPS and pretty good in PvP. But the thief in Dungeons and Dragons is someone who do all sorts of tricks. The rogue is far more like a thief than an assassin. Rogue is one of my favorite classes. You can use a bow, you can use a knife. Rogue have the skill Haggle, which, I mean, no one puts a point in that skill, but it makes so much sense as a rogue, the story of the rogue. You get a better discount from buying from any PCs. It's even better than the merchant class. It's one person better. The rogue had skills to strip other players from their equipment, so they were quite useful for War of Imperium. The main skill was Intimidate, which allowed the rogue to copy a skill. It could even be a magical skill. 
So you can see there were so many different ways in which you could play with a rogue. This was going so much beyond the Holy Trinity Division. I think the most amazing classes from a game design perspective were Blacksmith and Alchemist. The merchant had skills to assist in making money. They could buy stuff from any PC cheaper and they could sell more expensive. Also, they could carry a cart, allowing them to carry more items. And the most important skill, they could set up a shop. They were the only class that could set up a shop. And that's a fundamental aspect of Ragnarok that distinguished Ragnarok from basically all other MMOs. Merchants had only one skill for DPS, well, except you could get the cart revolution, but from the main skills, it was just one. But anyway, they only had like two skills for DPS, so they were not actually very much fun to play with. Now with the 2-1 class, with the blacksmiths, then they started to have some good DPS, and that made it fun to play with them. While swordsmen were good with swords and spear, the thieves were good with knives, the blacksmith was good with axes. There is no type of weapon in Ragnarok that's useless, they're all useful, and that's very beautiful. I know so many MMORPGs where certain kinds of weapons are useless, the blacksmith could make better weapons, weapons with elements, and the alchemist could make potions and throw them, so the alchemist could play the role of support, substituting the priest. But that's not enough, no no, Ragnarok is a masterpiece. The alchemist could have an homunculus. Their behavior wasn't good, but you could change the programming script. It used Lua, which wasn't so hard, and that is so amazing, it is so nice. You could play as an alchemist, and you could have this homunculus, it's really nice, even when you think about the expanded classes, like the ninja, it's, it's so nice. The ninja feels like Naruto, and the alchemist, they really remind a little bit Fullmetal Alchemist. I could go on and on about all the classes, but my point is to show how the game expanded the Holy Trinity. It expanded the division of labor, of what people could do in a party. It expanded the game. The ability to create weapons, to create potions, to create elemental converters. There were different ways to play support, different ways to debuff a monster. Each class had its own flavor and each class had many variations of builds and gameplay. Making a new character of a different class meant playing the game in completely different ways. At that time, the game was so fascinating. I mean, what could the future bring? What new classes? What new variations? How much further could Ragnarok innovate and improve and expand the genre? Well, sadly, not much. Now we head into the second part of the video, the one where the fantastic and rich tree of classes in Ragnarok collapsed into just one single type of gameplay. The transcendent classes were added, they didn't change the game too much, they basically enhanced what each class already did. I like the transcendent classes, but looking back we can see how it was a tipping point. Instead of expanding the game, creating more branches in the tree, which would be an horizontal expansion of the game, they expanded it vertically. The transcendent classes are not new branches in the tree, they're extensions of the already existing branches. Well, that wasn't so bad, since there were already so many variations in the game. Things got worse when they introduced the third classes. This is the point where Ragnarok started to lose its originality. It started to lose its soul. I never really liked the third classes. To this day, I still don't really love them. I play with them, but I don't love them. When they were first introduced, the game still had a division of labor. So when they were first introduced, it actually didn't reduce everything to solo play. It started by reducing a little bit more towards the classic DPS, tank and healer. But look at the skills of the third classes. They're all about better buffs or better damage. You would think that the third class of the blacksmith would make even more types of equipment, right? Maybe more weapons, maybe armor. No, it doesn't. There is not a single skill of mechanics that are about making equipment. The third class of alchemist, the geneticist, at least had skills related to making more potions. The sad thing is that no third class introduced something new into the game. It was all the same. They could have made a necromancer, I don't know, maybe a mage that decides to focus on dark magic, they could have made a fallen crusader, maybe they could have made a new swordsman class based on single hand weapons, maybe a hoplite, a warrior with a shield and a spear, I don't know, they could be creative. 
But the third classes by themselves were not responsible for ruining the many styles of gameplay. Actually, there is no single event that made this happen. Instead, it was a series of smaller changes. The main ones being the third classes and the cash shop. Things got pretty bad when they added gears that would heal the player. And also the extremely overpowered gears. Many of these gears came with the cash shop. Not initially, it took some time, but really it was just a matter of time. Instead of making new classes, Gravity was just adding new levels. 150, 175. Gravity has announced 4th classes, and guess how they are. They are all about buffs and DPS. As Ragnarok got older, so did the whole genre of MMOs. The landscape of games has changed. MMORPGs ceased to be the leading types of multiplayer games. We had League of Legends, Minecraft, the explosion of battle royales. Nowadays we have Roblox and so many other games. Ragnarok stopped getting new players. The new players of Ragnarok are actually people who played many years ago. People who play Ragnarok are older now. I'm talking about you and me. Many of us have kids and all of us have duties. We have to go to work, take care of our families. We simply don't have the same amount of time. And socializing isn't that easy anymore. I can't use voice chat during most of my time. Most of the money Gravity makes comes from mobile games. Have you checked them? They're all about automatic play. You play a button and that's it. The game plays for you. And why people play them? Well, because it is easy. It doesn't consume much time. So it's easy to fit the game into your life. And we all want to have a little bit of Ragnarok in our lives. Finding people to form a party with a tanker, a DPS and a healer takes time. And it makes sense to facilitate solo playing. So nowadays all we get is more overpowered items. Any class can do anything. Anyone can deal damage. Anyone can heal without a healer. You might not be able to do some of the hardest content of the game, like killing some MVPs and bosses. If you don't have good equipment, you would need a party. But with enough money, anyone can do anything alone. And I'm very serious about this. The PvP in the game is almost dead. War of Imperium is less than a shadow of what it previously was. Gravity wants to make PvP more interesting, and they have some updates for that. And... What can I say? I mostly play solo nowadays as well, but I miss the old days, the old Ragnarok. We all do, right? Ragnarok started with the Holy Trinity, but already had the foundations for going beyond. And it did. Introduced many different classes. It was a truly beautiful tree of classes. But as time went by, everything changed. Nowadays the game is basically solo play. And I currently mostly play solo play as well. I still have a lot of fun playing the game, but it's not the same as before. The game is amazing because of its foundation. The future of Ragnarok is to stay as it is. Ragnarok was a really big MMORPG, and MMORPGs are a little bit like stars. When a star is really, really big, at the end of its life, it becomes a white dwarf. And it stays like that for billions of years. So when you think about the grand scheme of things, the star spends far more time in that state than in any other state. But still we call that state, we call it the end of its life. And the same is with Ragnarok. We have already been living the end of Ragnarok for quite a few years already. And it might stay like this for many, many years ahead. And it's a bit ironic that Ragnarok means apocalypse for the Vikings, right? But we never think of the end in this way. We always think of a supernova, right? A big explosion. But maybe it's like the white dwarfs and they stay like that. So the fate is to stay in this state for far longer than when it was bright and young. But who knows? Maybe a new star appears. Maybe ashes of creation. I don't know. But I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a longer one this time. And I hope you have a great time in Midgard.